He is the most documented psychic of all time and Christian County, Kentucky's most famous native son. Known as the Sleeping Prophet, Edgar Casey could treat illnesses, predict the future, often accurately according to Casey scholars, and delve into matters of the universe most would find incomprehensible, all while in a sleep-like trance. A store clerk and photographer by trade, Edgar Casey was born in 1877, a few miles out of Hopkinsville in Christian County. He came from a typical farm family and never even finished grade school. But at the age of 13, Casey said a beautiful woman appeared to him in a vision, granting him the ability to help others. He did that until his death in 1945, never asking for any kind of payment. His readings, as they were called, numbered more than 14,000 over the course of his lifetime. In them, he touched on more than 10,000 different subjects. Among them, the prophecy of world events, spirituality, science, and medical advice. Skeptics question his so-called psychic ability, saying he may have had a photographic memory secretly reading hundreds of books with the ability to remember the contents of all of them. Believers say this would have been impossible in Hopkinsville in the early 20th century. This quantity of book material just wasn't available. So did Casey have the ability to take his mind somewhere beyond space, time, and the universe as we know it? The Penny Royal Area Museum in Hopkinsville houses a permanent Casey exhibit. The executive director here is a believer in Casey's mysterious powers. I am a believer in what he was doing. I really don't know how anyone could refute it. Um, if you look at the readings he gave, the things he was able to accomplish through these readings, I just don't see how there would be any way that this was some kind of uh, farce, that this was some kind of trick that was being played. Um, he w was clearly not that kind of person. Through these readings, he was very adamant that this was not something he was ever going to do um, for his own personal gain. This was not something he was doing to make money. This was, he was doing this to benefit others. He could go into these trances and he could literally cure people of diseases that doctors could not. He would go through a process of loosening his collar, untying his shoes, and he would lay down on a couch and he'd essentially go to sleep. And once he was asleep, he would have someone leading him through and asking him questions. It wasn't just take this medicine and you'll be better. It was not curing the, the initial problem at hand. It was curing what caused the problem. And those things may, a lot of times his recommendations included medical treatment and changes in diet and physical activity, but these kind of comprehensive overall treatments to, to, the, to the body, mind, and soul. And that's a lot, of, a lot of what Edgar Cayce was about, was treating the body, the mind, and the soul all as one. Then be a well-rounded body. Take specific, definite exercises morning and evening. Make the body physically as well as mentally tired in those things that have been producing those conditions where sleep, inertia, poisons in the system from non-elimination will disappear. And so will the body respond to the diets. His diet recommendations, looking at them now, it's, it's fascinating to me. It's all the things that we call, you know, fancy and organic and eating local and not eating too much heavy meats or too many starches. That's what Edgar Casey was preaching. Drink water, um, ex you know, in excess almost. You know, drink as much water as you can. Try to stay away from other things. We're at 530 West 7th Street near downtown Hopkinsville. The Casey family were living here in 1901. And Christian County historian March. William T. Turner also First believes time, Casey was a true psychic. He points to an family. example of a reading when two men ask him questions that would benefit them financially. And to say the least, they were not the most highly respected and reputable of men. They were very interested in the almighty dollar. And so they began to ask him, questions, uh, they began to ask him questions about the grain futures market on the Chicago Board of Trade. And they began to ask him about the results of horse races. And he hit on the nail every time. 
But after a few sessions like this, Edgar began to experience severe headaches. And in a reading, he said, I am being taken advantage of, and if I don't stop this, I will lose the capability. And so from that point forward, he always made sure that a family member or someone else who was trustworthy to sit with him, to be sure that the examiner didn't ask him questions he shouldn't ask. Was Edgar Casey's extraordinary powers a gift from God? I'm a great believer in fate. The Lord gives us talents. If they surface and we use them, that was intended. Now, of course, he struggled throughout his life with whether or not to pursue it because public reaction was so negative, even from his family, except his mother and a few others. And so he attempted to lay it aside and it kept coming back, eating at him, that it was a gift God had given him and it was his, it was his responsibility to use. Edgar and his wife Gertrude eventually moved to Virginia Beach, where Edgar founded ARE, the Association for Research and Enlightenment. ARE houses Casey's 14,000 readings still being studied today. Giving a psychic reading took a great deal of energy out of him, emotionally and physically. And in a self-reading once, he indicated that the subject is overworked and needs to cut back on the number of readings. He was overworked because he was such a conscientious individual with God's gift in him. He wanted to help everybody who came to his door. And recommendation was that two readings be given a day. Well, during World War II, as it worsened, and people were writing about their loved ones who'd been injured in war, what can be done to help them recover, or is my loved one going to survive the war? Just a myriad of questions. By early 1944, he was given seven and eight readings a day. And so that brings in the physical exhaustion part of it. He made a prediction that his followers say refers to our time right now. A new age is coming, according to Casey, an age of purity, global consciousness, and spiritual consciousness we have yet to encounter. All this from a simple Kentucky farm boy who never went to high school. Edgar Casey is buried in a Hopkinsville cemetery beneath a small, unassuming gravestone. He didn't believe grandiosity should mark his life or his death.